Welcome to the interview. I'm Dan Hollander. Today we're talking with local photographer Mac Brown. Good to have you with us, Mac. Thank you very much. How many years have you been involved in photography? Well, I took my first pictures to uh, for a newspaper, I guess, in 1966, 67, mm -hmm. when I was still in high school. Yeah. What interested you? Was it just something new, something you, you wanted to experiment with? Or? No, a friend of mine told me it's really easy to get out of class and not get into trouble in high school <laughs> if if you were on the yearbook staff, and I thought that sounded like a great plan to me. Yeah. And so I started doing things for the yearbook, and then got a few things in the newspaper, and uh, kind of got fascinated with the dark room, and just kind of went from there. Yeah. Never turned around. No, I. You know I. I went to college and got a real job for many years. <laughs> so you were just overall interested in photography was something neat to you then? Yes. Uh, uh, I'm an art person and of course painting takes a long time and all the other things I yeah. took. I've tried. Uh, photography seemed to suit me best. Yeah. Was it difficult to get started? I had a high school teacher, Don Sinback, and I have to credit him with doing pretty much everything. He had a dark room in his basement and uh, he showed me a lot of things that uh, are still with me today. Can we have a boat? A uh, friend of ours saw this boat at a yard sale and brought it out to us. Uh, we have, there's a sign back there that says Pinellas County, which I found out was in Tampa, Florida. We bought it at a yard sale in Hohenwald. I think it's kind of neat. I don't know how it got from Hornwall to uh, uh, from Tampa to Hornwall, but I suspect there was some partying going on. Yeah. Uh, and let's see. We this is one of our favorite summertime sets. Still have some of your first equipment? Mm. I would I, guess no, but probably not. I think I do have a little old Kodak Brownie that was my first camera, so to speak, it probably had that I got when I was seventh or eighth grade. The bus came from Clifton, Tennessee. It is a Chicago Transit Authority bus, 1950 model GMC. And it actually runs not very well, but it will run. It, we've used that for musicians and uh, seniors and a little bit of everything over the years. And I guess I'm sure that today's equipment is daylight and dark ahead of all that. Quite a bit, you know, when uh, about 1999-2000 when we had what we call the digital revolution, we went from analog film cameras to digital. That was a big learning curve and a big change and the first digital cameras basically worked up to film standards. Now today I think they're equal or superior in a lot of cases to the analog cameras, but although I do see a lot of resurgence in film cameras. For those folks who are watching and say, gee, I want to I wanna make some good pictures, is there a secret to it? Do you well, have to look look at what you're thinking it's going to look like after you get the picture? Or? Well, when I first started the newspaper, a guy told me F8 and be there. Uh, but uh, basically, I think it's learning to see. Because People have to, you know, you look at things in a different way. Whereas, and a lot of, you know, a lot of my clients, uh, when they look at a picture, they're looking at for a, a, a smile or something. You know, I'm looking at light, I'm looking at shadows, I'm looking at composition. Yeah. Uh, basically, the things that I learned in uh, basic art classes, you know, still apply. This is our pretty much our off season for outdoor things, but. Uh, there is our country store. It may be something else next year, but uh, we've had that for years. The, uh, if you notice, there's a little Coke uh, cooler there, a metal one. It came out of Lumpy's in Mount Pleasant. The uh, old feed scale came from my great or my grandfather's store in Liberty Grove. The gas pump is courtesy of Steve Keaton. Uh, the uh, 1959 Renault 
came from the old Chrysler country building and the girls have painted on it, it no telling what it will look like next year. If you need to go fishing, we've got a dock there that we can uh, put water in and kids fish off the dock there. Is it important to have a smile on the person you're taking a picture of? Or can you make a picture without a smile and it says more than somebody who's smiling? Well, people want smiles. And the reason they want smiles is because in the 19, earlier 19 teens or 20s, Kodak, which produced the first consumer camera, came out with an ad a program that said smile for the Kodak. So it was so successful that everybody believes you have to smile for the camera. Uh, personally, I think the, the the better part of a photograph is not the smile, but it's the eyes. And yes, you, uh, in competition, when we do competition prints, we don't have people looking at the camera. We don't have people smiling. Mm -hmm. But it just takes time to develop that skill, I guess. Well, I, yes, uh, obviously it does. <laughs> well, I say it does. Now, my daughter has picked it up a whole lot faster than probably I ever did. Rebecca has, uh, uh, help, has been helping with me ever since she was in high school, and she started shooting professionally when she was in college. And I, I guess it's like with anything else. It just takes a lot of practice. And, and it takes a lot of practice. Concentration. Yes, if I put as much time on my guitar playing as I have. <laughs> Uh, photography, I might, might be okay today. Yeah. How do you capture that special moment that everybody says, gosh, I'm so glad they got a picture of this? Well, it's, it's different with different things and different people. Yeah. It's just, uh, that's a good question, though. Be at the right place at the right time? Well, a lot of that is absolutely, like I said, F.A. can be there, but, uh, I think it's building rapport with people and you know today that's that's getting harder to do because we're you know we're constantly on a schedule we have to be somewhere and we think you know I've got X amount of time to do this mm -hmm. and sometimes you can do that right away it's just like when we're doing children you know we could have a child come in and in five minutes have a a great set of pictures. Sometimes it takes a lot longer. Yeah. What do you see in the future for photography? You now, most of us don't want to see all the all the things in our face that are there. Right. So we do a lot of retouching, and the modern cameras capture everything. But basically, we're we're doing more and more with uh, just plain outdoors. Over. Uh, We've got a pond over next door, and we've got a over at our other farm, and uh, we use uh, the hills and the hollows over there quite a bit. This is the my main camera room and the lights. We've got uh, we're kind of between sets right now because we've been doing Christmas and don't really have anything set up except uh, we've got a little background for business portraits. This is a master of photography degree, and it's awarded by the Professional Photographers of America. Uh, it entails getting merits from prints and from speaking and from learning experiences and it took me several years to get that. For someone who wants to get in photography, what's your suggestion? What what can they do or not do? Well the good thing is just buy a relatively decent camera and there I mean there's dozens of them now. And buy a big S D card and take pictures and take and look and see what, what you're doing. And I, you know, look at uh, look at art books because its composition is the same. I don't care if it's a 16th century painting or 21st century photograph. The same rules still apply: lighting, technique, uh, space, color. If we use color, photography's always going to be around in, in some form, isn't it? Well, we hope so. Yeah. The the big thing that we see today is that the younger generation, gosh, I used to be part of that, but uh, the younger generation uh, doesn't put as much value on paper as they do having a digital file. And 
you know, most people unfortunately have all their pictures on that phone, mm -hmm. and eventually. I don't care what kind of digital file you have, it's going to fail. It's going to go away. The only thing that's going to remain is the paper or vinyl that's printed. You know, I've known of too many people that had all their things on an iPhone or, or on an SD card and just never got around to doing anything with it and something happened to it, it fell into water or or it it just went away. And even you know, even you know, we think well we store it on a uh, uh, CD or a DVD, and it's going to be away, uh, for there forever. Well, no, it's not because they're going away too. Yeah. So you've got to make plans for the future if you want to mm -hmm. hold right. on to that mm -hmm. stuff. Appreciate the visit. Okay, thank you. Really good. If people want some more information, I'm sure you welcome their call. Sure. Mm -hmm. Good deal. Thank you. For Matt Brown, our guest today, talking about photography. That's the interview. I'm Dan Hollander. We thank you for watching.